Well, ladies and gentlemen, please, your attention. I think you all know our guest of honor today, our great Congressman Jeff Johnson and Vera Johnson, his lovely and gracious wife. Now, many of you know that Jeff is now completely recovered from a triple bypass operation. Doesn't he look great? I never felt better. Before I turn the floor over to the congressman, I'd like to thank my old friends, Mr. and Mrs. Zeke Bridges, for the use of their wonderful, lovely home here. Thank you, Zeke. Now, sirs, ladies and gentlemen, in the 20 years of the great... bitch. Uh, well, it seems like host's work is never done. <laughs> now, in the 20 years that the Honorable Jefferson Davis Johnson has been our representative in Congress, Excuse me. The door has always Pardon been me. open to us. What do you say, Pete? Whatever our walk Excuse of life, me. utilities, Excuse pharmaceuticals, me. insurance. One virgin sour Real straight up with extra Wait. orange, and one Gibson no onion, and two white wine spritzers, ahead, and a low and brown. Oh, please allow me to light a cigarette for you. Oh, this one, you sir. The way your hair matches your eyes, I don't know how I can control My myself. Excuse me, I get those drinks. I can't believe that you're Inga. You don't look Swedish. You're so different from your picture. That wasn't me on the TV, but that sure was me on the telephone. You want me to prove it, Zeke? You told me that you want me to tie you up and beat you with my... My God, Inger, that was on the phone. I never thought you'd be in my house. You've got to get out of here. But you told me you wanted me. You told me to quit my job, and now, honey, here I am. Not now, waiter. Please. Don't worry about a thing. I'll handle this. You. Bag on the floor, hands in the air. Do it! Sergeant Brown, vice squad. Undercover operations. I know who you are, dirty pig. Hey, shut up! You're under arrest. My God, what's going on here? Sir, you've been the target of a ruthless gang of con artists. I think it all started when you called the Girls of Many Nations party line. It's a 1-900 phone sex. You put it on your credit card instead of your phone bill because you didn't want your wife to see it, right? Big mistake. The gang used your credit card number to find out everything they could find out about you. It's the gang's M.O. to wait until the victim's having a big party and will do anything, pay big money to avoid embarrassment. Embarrassment? Some bitch! This goes beyond embarrassment. A hundred of my very best friends paid a thousand dollars a piece to have a drink with Congressman Johnson, not to mention the fact my wife is probably looking for me right now. Sir, that is exactly what their evil scheme is depending on. In fact, any second now, a huge Latino man's gonna burst in pretending he's an outraged husband. Inga! What are you doing with my wife? Senor. It's okay, Alice. My friend, rum and coke. Don't let anyone else in, please. Thanks. Did he touch you? Oh, yeah, I got you rum and coke. Dad, your rum and coke, and she could drink it with you. Hey, cállate la boca! Cállate la boca ahora! Ahora sí! Now you see how they were going to plan the con you out of your money. But I know better. Because I know you're a courageous citizen, and I know you're going to testify. Oh. Yes, you're going to testify. I can't testify. Well, sure you can. All you've done was phone sex. A lot of people have done that. He wanted me to tie him up and spank him with a wet garter belt. No, 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 no. Excuse me. That is between the fantasy hostess and the freak. I don't even want to hear. <gasps> freak? Hey, Poppy, I got a tape in the car. Eight track or cassette. That's right. You want to hear it? No, 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 no. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, please. They're trying to intimidate you by telling you that they have an audio tape of you freaking on it. Don't you think you're going to intimidate him? You're not intimidating him. He's going to testify because his family may not know he's a freak, but he's been married 20, 30 years. His wife know he's a freak already. Freak? Uh, uh, Sergeant Brown, I have to talk to you in private, please. Mr. Bridges, I can't leave the suspects by themselves. Well, let's uh, lock them in the crapper. OK, come on. Move in the back. Come on, man, move it. Come on! Yeah, no more talking. Hey, wait, hey! Come on, muchacho, goddammit! Now, you've all met my legislative assistant, Kimberly. Uh, Kimberly and my fine staff, along with myself, will be available to you 24 hours a day. I'm proud to be your man in Washington. I plan to keep going back as long as you keep sending me. Please listen, Sergeant. I'm the chairman of a large conservative insurance company. I know. I know you're chief, Sergeant Brown. Help me and you'll be Lieutenant Brown. Just get these people the hell out of here quietly. Mr. Bridges, I know these people, OK? If you let them go, they're just going to blackmail you. I don't care. What do they want? Going by the other victims, it costs like $5,000. OK. That's 5000 each, you know. OK. 
You know it's four people in the gang. $20,000? See, that's what I'm telling you. I think you should testify. No, I can't. Please put your money away, sir. Look, it's, it's just that I don't have that much cash. I've only got $12,000. See, and it's four people in the gang. Wait a minute. My Rolex. Oh, Mr. Bridges, no. No, 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 please, sir. No, it's worth $10,000. Oh, Mr. Bridges, I don't want to take your watch. I don't want to take your money. And besides, they don't want a watch. They want cash. Take the damn money. Take the watch, please. Get them out of here and get that tape. You know this goes against my every principle. Darling, don't you look wonderful. Okay. Nice to see you. Nicely. Hey, how's that knee? Oh, hey, 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 Father, I'm going to I'm going to miss you, Father. Hey, what are you doing? Why are you locking me in? I got to go get the tape. I don't want you to give them the money until I get the tape in my hand. Come with me. Chief, by golly, am I glad to see you. I'm sorry I'm late. I had an emergency. You know, Sergeant... Where'd he go? Sergeant Brown, the vice squad. We don't have a vice squad. You don't have a... Son of a bitch! Oh, waiter, where's my bourbon sour? Oh, you must think I'm Kareem. I'm Jamal. He stiff you in your drinks, too? He fine. Kareem! Wait right there. Kareem, where's this woman's drink? This woman's thirsty, Kareem! Thinking of retiring from Congress. You can't retire. You just promised all these people you're going to run again. That was a political promise. Now, you know better to believe that. Zeke, come here. Listen to this. Have you all seen the waiter come through out oh, here? Hey, Zeke, I need your help. Hey, what's got into Zeke? Dan, if I know. <laughs> Listen, Jeff, uh, you know you got the best job in the world, don't you? You get to go hunting and fishing and skiing and golfing the best resorts. Then you get to call it official business. <laughs> Jeff, you know there's no aphrodisiac like power. I mean, are you tired of having the most beautiful and intelligent women in this country? Ah, the joy has gone out of Congress, Olaf. You know, that Perks thing was the last straw. You know, who needs the aggravation? Life's too short. Yeah, yeah well, look, Jeff, you can't retire. But if I retire this year, I get to keep $1.3 million that's left in my campaign fund. It's called the grandfather loophole. All right, Jeff, <laughs> I got it. <clears throat> Come here. There's this uh, small software company that's about to go through the roof. And what you do, you buy a few thousand dollars worth of stock options. It's going to bring in a half a million dollars easy. That's just for openers. What? If you put it like that, I suppose I have a duty to continue my career in public service. <laughs> duty. served with Jeff Johnson in Congress for a generation. No one was a better legislator, a better husband. We're going to miss him. But we are grateful that his passing was peaceful, the consummate public servant, working late into the night at his desk. Thank you. 
Vera? Yes. Let me talk to you for a minute in here. Excuse me. Uh, now, I know that uh, you're still in shock over Jeff's passing. But, well, we need to talk about his seat. We do. I would like for you to announce that you're going to run for Congress. With your name, you can't lose. Mrs. Jeff Johnson would win in a walk. Dick, I've been a Washington wife for 20 years. I think that's enough bullshit for one lifetime. I'd help. I'd be running the office night and day. I'm sure you would, dear. But I couldn't give you the same kind of job satisfaction Jeff gave you. Uh-huh. How did I end up with a thief or a grandson? Hey, Gaha. Hey, thief steal. I can, all right? It's different. I'm an artist. I'm a con artist. Hey, look, there's a new ad. Hey. I am Inga. I am here from Sweden. And I'm, I'm so, so lonely. lonely. I, need I need a, a man. man. And so do my girlfriends. Maria, my hot-blooded Spanish friend. Babette, the Parisian pussycat. Yeah. And many others. For I hope you're spraying your lips from doing this. Fantasies. I hope your lip we muscles freeze up. Care. So call the girls of many nations at 1-900-555-NATO. What do you think of my accent, Grandma? Very, very good. <laughs> hey, hey. Thank you for calling Girls of Many Nations Party Line. For hot-blooded Italian wildcats, press 1 now. For perky American cheerleaders, press 2 now. For a busty Swedish love goddess, press three now. Another customer for Inga. Don't, Don't you me. dare talk to that man. Hello, this is Inga. Oh, hello, Pa. How about you? Oh. <laughs> Tell me, Paul, do you have MasterCard? If you don't hang up that phone, I will flush it down the toilet! Ah! Uh, no, Paul. Call me later, please. What's the matter with you? This is my business. You are not only a con man, you get your cousin Loretta to help you by talking dirty. Shame on you! What you, 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 you mad because you can't show my picture around the pool no more, Grandma? Of course not. Look what these arthritic hands have been doing. Oh. oh, what are you owing? Oh, you're Thomas Jefferson Jefferson. Why you keep using my middle name? It sounds like a, a tap dancer or something. Make me proud of you, Thomas. Make me proud of the name you carry. I'm Ned Grable, vice president and general manager of WFL. We think Mrs. Jeff Johnson did the right thing in not running for the congressional seat left vacant by her husband's death. Jeff Johnson's name may still be magic, but it'll take more than the magic of name recognition to solve our region's problems. I'm Ned Grable. Name recognition. Lordy, what a notion. People would have to be some kind of boobs just to vote for somebody because their name was Johnson. <laughs> I remember once back in Georgia, they even elected a dead man. His name was still on the ballot and folks were just used to voting for him. My friends, I want to tell y'all about a town where the streets are paved with gold. I'm talking about a town where the marks will take you to dinner after you fuck them. I'm talking about a place where they run out of money, they just print some more. In this town, Cat bounced 900 checks, didn't even have to go to jail. You mean Las Vegas? No, not Las Vegas. No, honey, he's talking about Washington, D.C. I, y'all ready for this? I am running for Congress. What is this, a joke? Hey, what's the con, T? Yeah, I don't get it, man. Yo, man, Van Dyke. Yeah. You remember Willie Sutton? My hero. All right, now, what did Willie Sutton say when they asked him how come he robbed banks? That's where the money is. Exactly. Washington, D.C. 
that's where the money is. Listen, I have been doing some research. I've been to the library. <laughs> Listen, now, before you left, congressmen, when they get elected, they get $130,000 a year. That's their base salary. But then they have these things called PACs, okay, the political action committees, right? Then there's these lobbyists. Now, the lobbyists, their whole point in life is to buy you off. They just buy you off, and it's totally legal. It's the kind of a lifetime. And I'm telling y'all, I know we can do this shit. Who are we, white man? Us, we, us, man. Listen, if I get elected, I gotta have a staff, right? I'm gonna get a staff allowance. It says here that new con get a staff allowance of five hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars. Damn. Yo. Damn. Yo. Okay, now I get that kind of cash. I'm splitting up with my homies and my whole mix. But how exactly are you gonna get your butt to Congress? Yeah, T. I mean, why the hell would anybody vote for you? It's not like they're voting for me. They're voting for name recognition. The congressman here was Jeff Johnson. My middle name is Jefferson, last name is Johnson. Name is Th Cut off the Thomas, shorten the Jefferson. Jeff, Je nobody knows that their congressman is dead. Who knows that Jeff is dead? He's a congressman, who cares? You know what I'm saying? Look, if I get on the ballot as Jeff Johnson, nobody's gonna know. Well, how are you gonna get on the ballot? <sighs> That's where y'all come into play, my friends. I need, uh... <laughs> I need, uh, 5,625 signatures. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this wee shit out of cash. Hey, man, you got a better plan? I do. So tell me, who are these silver foxes? Was it old people just like to vote? It's a political party. The big thing is they got their own line on the ballot. They already got the signatures. Can I help you? Uh, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. We have an appointment to see Addie Rifkin. Right. You want to talk politics? Talk. Uh, we was wondering, who are you going to run for Congress this year? Oh, uh, the usual sacrificial lamb. Probably Sylvia Rowland. She just lost her husband. She needs to meet new people. Why? Uh, Miss Rifkin, I'd like to run on the Silver Fox's ticket. I mean, I, mean I, I, I believe and care about you and your issues. That's what my son says, but does he call? What makes you think a group of altacockers is going to support a man who hasn't clipped his first nose hair yet? Because I can win. No, no. A Republican can win. A Democrat can win. A silver fox can only make a symbolic point. Mrs. Rifkin, if you get me on the silver fox's ballot line, and if you give me the support... If, if, and above a Volker hot fate, some votes are a Zeta. But God has euch kein Nonnetschein. Oh, oh, oh. What's all this? Oh, she just said that if my grandmother had balls, she'd be my grandfather. And I told her that God never told nobody to be stupid. Where the hell did you learn to speak Yiddish? I learned it from Morris Elfbein, the gym king of Miami Beach. He taught me that, and he also taught me, you don't always have to have the best card stuff in the hand. Maybe not in gin, but in politics, young man, you need money to win. You need a name to win. You need... I do have a name. What, you're an athlete? You're not on MTV, are you? My name is Johnson. Jeff Johnson. The name you know. Jeff Johnson? Well, that's a name even our Alzheimer's group will remember. <laughs> I'm not quite sure I understand, Professor Franklin. You did your doctoral thesis on my husband? Yes, Mr. Johnson. Your husband was a very great man. He did so much to help my people. Uh, I remember the time you said that, that welfare is a drug and you have to kick it like cold turkey. And uh, at the time, I was uh, on welfare and I did just that. It inspired me to get out of my life. Very inspirational. Yes, well, really, I'm sure if you were alive... Ma'am, I was actually in the audience one day when he looked out and he said, if you people just get off your dead asses and go out and look for work, maybe America can be a decent place to live in again. That inspired me. And I got It made me move my ass. And, and I have a poster of that on my wall now, and I show it to all my relatives and friends and Negroes. Really? Yes. Well, it's very kind of you to come all the way from... Where was it? The Wilson Pickett State uh, Teachers College, ma'am. But I didn't just come here to uh, pay my respects to your husband. I came here because because your husband deserves an archive where students can can study his legacy. So you want his papers? Not just his papers, ma'am. I would like uh, all uh, buttons and posters and bumper stickers and all the campaign paraphernalia you can spare, ma'am. I know you may have a, a sentimental attachment to a lot of these things, and you might take them. Pardon me. Take them all. Do you want the wedding photos, too? Oh, I don't know if I think that's necessary. That's lucky. So you won't have to go rooting around in the garbage. 
Ah. Mm. Mm. You're in pretty good shape for a professor. Do you work out? Actually, I'm scared myself. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Tomorrow, vote Jeff Johnson, the name you know. Who do we vote for for Congress? Don't we always vote for Johnson? Oh, that's it, Johnson. If you're just joining us, our exit polls project that in Florida, an unknown independent candidate whose sole asset appears to be his name may just possibly win a slim victory. Is that him? Is that him? Uh, Patricia, I believe the Congressman-elect Johnson has just arrived. campaign we campaigned on the issue and the issue is change change for the future the people have spoken <laughs> ask not what your country can do for you you have nothing to fear but fear itself if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Live free or die. And in conclusion, read my lips. Mira, mira, mira. Congressman Johnson, Congressman Johnson, Arthur Reinhardt, 
you don't remember me. I was Congressman Johnson's administrative assistant. Yeah. Yes. I FedExed all that material to you down in Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you look just like I thought you would look. <laughs> With these little wingtip shoes on. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. Uh, Congressman, I hope you don't think I'm out of line for meeting you here. I, I just thought you might need some help with logistics, settling in at your hotel. Uh, and since you didn't make it to the Harvard seminar for freshman congressmen, I took the liberty of putting together a set of their papers for you. <laughs> well, thank you for your initiative, Reinhardt, but I gotta admit to you, I've never been much of a student, but you can brief my staff on that, you know. And hey, a, a staff, what hotel are we staying at? You booked the hotel? Talk to him. You booked the hotel? What hotel? Nobody told me about no damn hotel. Uh, um, staff obviously failed to nail some vital details, so... Oh, geez, the, uh, the World Bank's in town. <laughs> Where are we gonna find you a room? Hey, yeah, I'll kick your ass in. You gotta be firm with the staff sometime. Continental Flight 228, Chicago Air. I got lucky at the Hay Adams. There was a coup in Uruguay. Okay. What? Uruguay. Anyway, their delegation just checked out. Well, you're a wizard, Reinhardt, and I knew we can count on you. Let's go. Hey, you got that? Yes, sir. Say, Congressman? Yo! I'd like to ask you something. Uh, I would appreciate it if you would consider me to be your AA. Oh, that's very nice of you. That's a very decent gesture. <laughs> but yo, man, listen, I'm a social drink. I don't really, you know, hit the bottle very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, administrative assistant. Oh. As you know, I used to work for Congressman Johnson, and I would like to work for you, Congressman Johnson. <laughs> so it'd be sort of like an affirmative action sort of thing. <laughs> Only kidding. Uh, listen, hey, I got your resume. I'll call you, okay? I'll look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to talking to you. Alrighty. Members only. Oh, we're going up to Congressman Johnson's office. I hate to be the one to tell you, but Congressman Johnson died. I'm the new congressman. I'm Congressman Johnson, and this is my staff here. I'm sorry, Congressman. I didn't see your pen. In fact, I still don't see your pen. What pen? Your member of Congress pen. I'm going to have to look you up. I'm in the book under Johnson, Thomas Johnson, Congressman. Thomas Jefferson Johnson. Yeah, I'm the man. No picture available. Oh, wait a second. I have my driver's license. Got a picture in late. Here, if I can get it out. <laughs> yeah. Driver's license. Oh. See, same cat. How could I ever have doubted you? Where to? Oh, we're going up to uh, 518. Well, the elevator only goes to four. You'll have to take the stairs from there. Are you going to be grabbing my ass like old Congressman Johnson? Oh, no, I would never grab your ass. Well, you said that awful fast. What's wrong with my ass? Oh, there's nothing wrong with your ass. I'm just, you know, I just wouldn't. I'm, you know, I'm the new Congressman. I ain't. You know, none of his old things he did. I ain't gonna grab nobody's old ass. I mean, I, I ain't gonna grab nobody's ass. You know, hey, hey, I'll, I think we're on the fourth floor. <laughs> I'll grab.
Good morning, Congressman. What is this shithole, man? Look at this place. What is this? Oh, um, you missed the freshman lottery for offices. They assigned them by draw. You didn't show for the draw, so you got the worst office in Congress. What lottery? What, I missed a lottery? It was all in those briefing books I mailed you. What else have we missed here? Are you hiring me, Congressman? It's a shakedown. Excuse me? Oh, ho, 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 ho. You're shaking me down, aren't you? Okay, I'm gonna love this town. Okay, I've been here five minutes and you're already shaking me down. All right, you're hired. <laughs> well, listen, fill me in on everything because I don't want to miss none of the good shit. <laughs> Let's go meet the natives. Yeah. Can you be a little more elegant than that? Shaking your hands and shit. Hey, how you doing? Thomas Johnson. Rick Simon. Freshman from Tulsa. And this is Bo Chandler from... Uh... Lufkin, Texas. Great party. You're Jeff Johnson, the guy from Florida. Yeah, that's me. You know, the rest of us are out there on the campaign trail, raising money, kissing ass, making speeches, dragging our butts from place to place, and he slides in on pure name recognition. Let me tell you something, Jeff. Fucking brilliant. How <laughs> <laughs> about that to kick him out of it? Okay, hey, no, I'm sorry. Hey, look, thanks. Thanks a lot. Hey, listen, and don't call me Jeff. Jeff is my working name. My name is Thomas, and this is my cousin, Miss Loretta. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> so what were you guys before you got elected? Lawyers or something? Oh, hey, no. <laughs> I did morning weather and traffic for KTOK in Tulsa. Oh. <laughs> you don't remember me? Tight end for the Oilers. My knee came down on <laughs> Oh, yes! Oh, hey, man, you know, I was wondering what happened to you. <laughs> hey, why don't you stop by my reception? Yeah, yeah, but don't you go to his reception before you go to my reception. But hey, I'm gonna be very offended if you guys don't come by my reception. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess you're gonna have to have a reception. Yes, I guess you're gonna have to have some. Shit, I ain't nothing about no reception. Wait. You no, know I love about this town where everybody call you a member. Every time I hear that, it made me think about Mr. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, watch them sprinklers, man. It's laughing and piss shooting every place. <laughs> I got a sprinkler too, now. Back at oh. you. All right, then. Mike Hoyt, Iowa. Thomas Johnson, Florida. So how'd you wind up in D.C., Iowa? You did a crap report on TV or something? Ah, uh, no, actually, I owed all to the Vietnamese. Oh, you're a war hero. P.O.W. When I got back to Cedar Rapids, I spent so many years telling the Rotary Club what was wrong in Washington, they finally told me to either put up or shut up. <laughs> so I put up, and here I am. What are you talking about? What's wrong with Washington? Washington's great. Oh, come on. We got acid rain killing fish, and nobody's stopping it. There's topsoil being washed away, no erosion programs. Why, there's chemicals in the livestock that... Oh, God, I sound like a Boy Scout. <laughs> no, actually, that's kind of nice. This town could use a, a few geeks like you. <laughs> Hi. Pete Slocum, Asbestos Information Institute. How are you, Pete? Nice to meet you. Ken oh. Korngold, National Distilled Spirits. Association. Very good to meet you, Ken. Nice to meet you. Paul Zickhauser, American Tobacco Council. <laughs> How are you, Paul? I hope you can all come to, to my reception. You all know Miss, Miss, Miss Loretta from my office? Hi. Jerry Corrigan. As soon as I saw how you got elected, I knew you were a real comer. <laughs> Hell, I bet Olaf Anderson voted for you. <laughs> I don't know. Who's Olaf Anderson? Won't tell him you asked. Fell on the left up there. Chairman, Gulf Coast Power. Constituent of yours. Client of mine. Pays the rent. Know what I mean? <laughs> Say, could I host a welcome to Washington fundraiser for you? Down my law firm on K Street? Absolutely. At $500 a head. You could pick up 20, 25 grand to help you get started. <laughs> and how much of that are you going to get? It doesn't come off the top. Down the road, I'll bill each of them 500 an hour whenever I take you to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Terry, you and I are going to be so close. <laughs> I want to welcome the new members to Washington.
We haven't had a freshman class this big in a long time. <laughs> Well, Congress needs your new blood, and you, in turn, are going to need new friends. That's why tonight we unite the two great pillars of our system, political and financial. Now, you know Congress has taken many hits of late, but, Congressman, look around you. The people you see here tonight are the ones that have stood behind us, and they are the ones that will be invaluable to you in your next campaign, which I might remind you is less than two years away. Now, this is our system of checks and balances at its very finest. Dick Dodge, your home state, going to run for speaker, raises more money than any other member. Of course, he's on the right committee, which makes all the difference. Yeah, of course. But I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. No, oh, he's on uh, the right committee, so I guess that makes all the difference. Not just on the committee. He's chairman of it. The big boys have to line up to take numbers to throw money his way. No shit. Oh, ah, uh, Mr. Johnson, you know, it's customary for the new members to pay a visit on us old fogies in the leadership, especially from your home state. Well, I would have, but I just got in town. I'm sorry, man. You know, you can make up for it by having a nightcap with me. Oh, absolutely. Can I have my car take you home? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, but you ain't about to start no homo shit, are you? Because I ain't with it. Huh? Hey. No, no. But that's good thinking, Thomas. I'm impressed by your instincts. <laughs> I didn't want to have to whip your ass in here, <laughs> You know what I mean? Tell me, Mr. Johnson, why'd you come to Washington? Well, of course, it's an opportunity to do something for my country and... Uh... Now, let's just cut the bullshit. I saw how you got elected. Now, flukes like you are either nutcases or they're troublemakers. I just want to know which one I've got on my hands. Why did you run for Congress? No bullshit. No bullshit. We got this whole topsoil problem in, uh... Acid rain is killing cattle. What? Yes, what? 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 Right on. <gasps> Wake up. <gasps> what is the name of that committee Dick Dodge is chairman of? Congressman, this is a surprise. Come on, man, spit it out. What's the name of the committee? Uh, uh. Come on, come on, come on. What uh, is it? Uh, oh, power and industry. Is there something wrong with the hotel? No, tell me about this power industry. I heard it's really good. This is a good thing, right? Yes. They call it the honey pot. Each member is constantly being lobbied by every cash-rich trade group in town. Oh, it's 2.40 a.m. Did, did you realize that? Oh, man, forget that. We're public servants, and time ain't supposed to mean nothing to us, right? Now tell me, how do I get in this committee? Um, that would be seniority. Uh, after six terms in office, uh, say, 12 years of service, your name moves along the list, and before you know it, you're off the fisheries committee and on to power and industry. Can this wait? I'm much more coherent than more. No, 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 you're doing fine, but listen, I need to know how I can get in this committee, like, immediately. Okay, okay, all right, all right, uh, immediately, immediately. Within, say, like, your next four years? No, 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 immediately, like, in my first four days. Like, hey, come on, I know you're a smart guy, that's why I hired you, you know what I mean? You might be standing here in, in these fire engine boxes shorts, but I have faith in you. Come on, now, count on you, now, talk to me, right? All right? Yes, thank you. Um, I, I don't think it's possible, sir. I mean, it would be unprecedented for a freshman congressman to be put onto that committee. Unless? Well, only in the most remote hypoth hypothetical situation. Yes. But this is ridiculous, For right? instance? Well, if the uh, President of the United States were to do you a personal favor, or uh, some enormously powerful special interest group. Chairman Dodge, please. 
Will you tell him that it's Mr. Joshua Benjamin from the NAACP on the line? No, ma'am, actually, you'll be of a great deal of help. I have a few minor questions. I would like to know how many members of the chairman's committee are African Americans. None. Well, I'm sure you have a, a Latino member on the committee. No Latinos either. Uh, does uh, the chairman have any Asians or any Native Americans on the committee? No Asians and no Natives. Does the chairman have any handicaps or gays on the committee? No gays. Well, you've been of a great deal of help. Um, just forget I even called. Uh, just tell him I said hi. OK, um, <laughs> uh, Armando Van Dyke, you guys are up next. I'll go hit him with the Urban League right away. Fine. Then I'll be the Conference of Southern Baptist Bishops. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Oh, hi. We haven't met yet. I'm Loretta Hicks, Congressman Johnson's office. Oh, hi. I'm Kimberly Meadows. I work for Chairman Dodge. Power and industry. How'd you get that job? I used to serve under the other Congressman Johnson. So I had the right experience. Well, I hope you haven't been bothered by the pickets. What pickets? Oh, did, did I let the cat out of the bag? Are we going to be picketed? Look, you've got to promise not to say where you heard this from. Not even my congressman knows. I promise. OK. My boyfriend works at the Rainbow Coalition, and he said. Congressman Johnson's office. Chairman Dodge. Yes? OK. That was Dodge. He wants to see you pronto. <laughs> so we still haven't lost our touch. <laughs> I see. He should be back in a moment, Congressman mm -hmm. Johnson. Oh, you're now. Well, we haven't met. Eli Hawkins. How you doing, <laughs> brother Eli? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Thomas Johnson. Yes, I know. The Florida upset. Well, now that you're here, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to feather your own nest, or are you going to make something of your office? Hey, I'm going to be as good a congressman as anybody else up here, all right? <laughs> exactly. What does that mean? Well, um, ever since I got back from, from Nam, I've been personally, I personally want to do something about the rainforest. Well, do me a favor. Don't tell me. I've just had my lunch. Oh, uh, Eli, you're going to have to excuse us. Thomas and I are a little late for a meeting. Come on, Kim. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have been meaning to ask your advice about something. I'm always available to a young man from my state. Great. It's about committee assignments. Now, that's interesting. That's just the thing I had in mind. Go ahead. Well, for the last two days, I've been getting approached by a bunch of chairmen from a bunch of different committees. I've been approached by the people from Foreign Affairs. I've been approached by the people from Ways and Means and Armed Services. And they all want me in their committees, and I don't know why. I'll be damned. Yeah, it's like you can understand my dilemma, because it's like with Foreign Affairs, you get to fly off to Paris whenever you want. And with Armed Services, they got bases all over the globe. Son, are you familiar with my committee, Power and Industry? Oh, yeah. But uh, it's not as well known as these other committees. Well, maybe not. But you've been very frank with me. I'm going to be extremely frank with you. These other committees, they're nickel and dime stuff. Power and industry, think of what we cover. Energy, transportation, insurance, the environment. Hell, son, there's no better committee on the Hill. That is, if you're interested in fundraising. Oh, I am, very much. It's just that these other chairmen made pretty strong cases. These other chairmen aren't from your home state. Oh. They're not offering to take you under their wing. Look out for your future. And you are? Hell yes, I am. Oh, well, I'm very flattered, Mr. Chairman. Dick. Well, I'm very flattered, Mr. Dick. No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Chairman Dick. No, Dick, just Dick. Oh, just Dick, just plain old Dick. Yeah. Oh, fine. Well, I know you don't get something for nothing. What do you want from me, Dick? <laughs> well, son, I want an able lieutenant. And I want you to smile for the cameras. Sweeter. 
you know Thomas Johnson, the new member of the committee? Thomas, this is Barclay Warburton. How are you, Barclay? Skeeter, please. Been called that since boarding school. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Skeeter. How much, please, been called that since reform school? <laughs> this EPA oversight hearing of the Committee on Power and Industry will come to order. I would like to welcome our first witness, the distinguished administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency. But before I do, I would like to note that we have a new member joining us today, the distinguished gentleman from Florida. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Great. Well, Mike, enjoy those hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> My name is Miss Loretta, and I'd like it very much if you just sign one of these little name tags. Well, that would be just nice. <laughs> it's an informal breakfast. Uh, you give us your point of view. We give you uh, bacon and eggs plus a $2,000 honorarium for your favorite charity, of course. The Thomas Jefferson Johnson Foundation. Oh, okay, an honorarium. <laughs> I like the way that sounds. <laughs> really nice to see you. Excuse me a second. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. Very nice to meet you, Miss Celia Kirby. It's an extremely beautiful name for an extremely beautiful woman. Well, my, that was very smooth. You know, after about 10 hours straight on my feet, making small talk, breathing in that cheap cigar smoke, that is exactly the kind of line I'm ready to fall for. <laughs> Slow down, okay? <laughs> sure, sure. Tell me, which one of these guys is Congressman Johnson? Oh, you look for a congressman? Yes. Well, how would you feel if I told you I was a congressman? Huh? Uh-huh. Oh, bull. <laughs> so sorry. Look, listen, would you give me two seconds to take my foot out of my mouth, please? Okay. Take all the time you need. Now, can we start all over again? Yes, yeah, Celia Kirby, legislative director of Pro Bono. Oh, Celia Kirby from Pro Bono. Very nice to meet you. Yes. Now, listen, will you tell me something? Are all the pro bonets as fine as you? Uh, Pro Bono is a public interest research and advocacy group. Now, I'd be delighted to brief you on our priorities this session. Do you think perhaps I could call your AA and be put on your schedule? Call my AA? Yes. Uh, no, you don't even have to call my AA. Listen, why don't we do this? Why don't we just say now, we're going to go out to dinner. You can brief me at dinner. I'd like an appointment, Congressman, not a date. Well, we could write it up as an appointment, but, you know, we'll have, you know, like flowers and dinner and mandolin and be a floral appointment. <laughs> it was a pleasure to meet you, Congressman. I will be in touch with your staff. There's one other thing. I am particularly interested in hearing your view on extending the sexual harassment law to include congressmen. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Can we turn the AC down, please? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have a confession to make. I don't know very much about poultry, but I do know people. And I like you people. I really do. And if you people come to me and you say to me that you have something to say important about poultry, I'm going to listen. Thank you very much. Congressman, we won't take up much of your time. Uh, this I, is Iris Schechter, our research Ira, how director. Are you? This is Mr. Ryan Hart. You remember him, don't you? Come on, sit and let's sit and have this chit chat that we've been dying up and dying to, to talk to you about these issues. Sit, everybody, sit. Come on. All we right. Can take as long as we want. Actually, Congressman, you do have several people waiting. Oh, oh no, 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 no. They can wait. They can, they can wait. wait. They can wait. Let's sit. sit. Ira, what are you doing standing? Ira, sit down. Oh, sorry. Ira? Oh, sure. <laughs> well. These are issue papers. Ah. Now, this session, we're targeting child safety, yes. auto insurance premiums, and food additives. Now, certainly, as the votes come up, you'll be hearing plenty from the other side. We simply would like a fair shot at making our case, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, now, let's talk about car insurance. What are you paying, Ira? Me? Yes. Oh, uh, <clears throat> well, I have an 82 Dodge Dart, and uh, I pay about $650 a year or so. 
$650, man, that's highway robbery. You know, a chop shop wouldn't give you more than $230 on a junker like that. Or so I've heard. Hey, look, I'm flying blind here. You know what we really need to do? What we need to do is for you to put together a little package. Put a package together for me, and we'll sit down, we'll block aside two Saturday evenings, and we can discuss it then. Well, I don't see any problem with arranging that. And once again, you've been more than generous with your time, Congressman. Hey, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? I clear my whole calendar and you're in not here in five minutes? Look, sit down. We haven't even discussed child safety yet. Iris, I'm gonna slap you. Sit. Come on. Down. Sit down. Let's finish talking. Let's talk about child safety now. Child, this is an important issue. Child safety. Well, we are sponsoring a bill imposing safety standards on imported toys. Great. I, I hate imported toys. Hate them. I, I wish they didn't exist. Especially those little, those little uh, baseball men with the springs and they do this. What is that? Fuck that, right? Fuck that. Yeah, I hate that. Listen, why don't we do this? Like I said, put the package together. We'll block aside a couple of Saturday evenings and we can discuss it and you can take me through all the ins and outs. Ins and outs? I'd like to do more money for you. But first, I've got to get your positions on a few issues. Now, where are you on sugar price supports? Sugar price supports? Hmm? Where should I be, Terry? Shit, it makes no difference to me. If you're for them, I got money for you from my sugar producers in Louisiana and Hawaii. If you're against them, I got money for you from the candy manufacturers. You pick, let's say, four. Yeah, four. Four. How about putting limits on malpractice awards? Well, you tell me. Well, if you're for them, I got money from the doctors and insurance companies. If you're against them, I got money from the trial lawyers. Let's put you down as against. Yeah, you know what? Put me down for against. How about pizza? Oh, no, this salad's gonna be enough for me. <laughs> Not for lunch, old buddy. For pack money. <laughs> you thought I was serious? Let's <laughs> fucking with you. <laughs> well, if you are, you are. Fucking with you. <laughs> I'll <boom. laughs> Terry, tell me something. With all this money coming in from both sides, how could anything possibly ever get done? It doesn't. That's the genius of the system. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby. Put down nuclear power for 10 Gs. <laughs> Mambo. Cool. Yeah, well, you know, the congressman's going to be out your way next to hunting in the morning, a little fishing in the afternoon, clean air, beautiful scenery, <laughs> all to work up a good appetite, because we got a fine French chef back at the lodge flown in special. Oh, oh, that's very, very nice. <laughs> you don't want anything from us? We would enjoy the opportunity to share our views. You see, we feel that the semi-automatic weapon's gotten a bad rap. Now, the gun control nuts try to make out that they're for drug dealers only, but, uh, well, Really, they're just guns for the ordinary sportsman. <laughs> they like a nice warm Uzi. attack.
and according to the 1988 study, it showed eight per hundred thousand. Am I losing you on these mortality rates, Congressman? No, not at all. I was, uh, I was just wondering how much of this is a, is a statutory problem and how much of it is a regulatory one. Mm, mm-hmm. Didn't the Merton Act cover most of this? Excellent point. Excellent point. Let me check something out. You're absolutely right. Hey, maybe we could get them to amend Merton. Oh, get him to amend it? Yes. Get him to amend it, huh? Well, for Merton to apply, you have to show high contagion, you know? And it sounds to me like your contagion rates are <laughs> no higher than the common clod. Cold. Mm. Common cold. <laughs> Excuse me a sec. Arthur! Ow. who values gold over goodness. The Lord allows no exemptions. Amen. And to the man who shows no respect for the privilege of walking this earth, the Lord allows no deductions. Amen. And to the man whose pockets are bulging and whose soul is empty, the Lord grants no 90-day extension. Amen. And when the last trump sounds, believe me, you will be audited. This is a wonderful date. Oh, darling, I'm glad you can make it. <laughs> oh, I love that sermon, Uncle Eli. This is your uncle? Yes, my niece tells me you're not half as slimy as I thought. That puts you somewhere between a lizard and a toad. <laughs> Quite a step up, huh? Thank you very much. <laughs> Forgive me for staring. I don't know how I missed a family <laughs> resemblance. <laughs> She's you in a skirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess if we're all bringing our wives out, you're going to bring your wife, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, sleep. Kelly. Yeah. How you doing, Tom? I need your help on the ethics bill, Leon. I want you to co-sponsor my amendments. You make a persuasive case, Eli. Well, that wasn't a yes. 
promise to give it the attention it deserves. Better luck next time, son. Yeah, man, you're so good. He's so good. Well, he took $600 off you that last hand, didn't he? Yes, he took a real shine to me. Yeah, well, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you lost to him on purpose. Hey, look, there's nothing wrong with letting the head of the ethics committee roll you every now and then. <laughs> you know, you're going to fit in real good around here. Too good. Hey, listen, how come you never asked me to help you out with your amendment? Oh, come on, Thomas, give it a rest. Everybody knows you're Dick Dodger's boy. Hey, man, I ain't nobody's boy. Well, don't waste your outrage on me. I know what you are. I am no different than anybody else up here, okay? Well, that's not true. You see, some people here actually do something besides saving their own ass. You know, just then you reminded me of my father. <laughs> yeah, really? How so? You used to say I was a scumbag, too. Why aren't you going to vote? Is that what that means? You know, all this time I've been listening to that shit thinking it was time for Final Jeopardy or something. Hi, I'm Look, leaving. We were just learning how a bill becomes a law. Was that a vote? Yes, that was a vote in there. Oh, oh, hey, yes, that was a vote. A vote was made. Bye-bye. And what did you vote? Uh, I voted nay, because it was a terrible bill, and it would have destroyed the fabric of American life. What was the vote on? <laughs> Rafe! Rafe, will you come here and talk to these nice people, explain them about the vote? Well, it was a motion on the previous question on the rule. No, it was a motion on the, on the re recommitment of the rule, the motion of the previous question. Which means... Clean air. Full lunches. Ah. Uh, <laughs> You see the difficult choices we have to make here, kids, between clean air and school lunches, OK? That's why I want to be the education congressman, because I feel that American students should be able to eat lunch and breathe at the same time. And I see in America where there's no such thing as a student who is below average. And I think it is wrong when students have to stay up late at night and miss all the good shows, doing homework, then get up early in the morning and go to school. This sort of thing just is not fair. Yeah! Oh, good morning. May I help you? Yes, I'm Ellen Juba. This is my daughter, Mickey. Hi. We'd like to see our congressman. We live in the district. Just a moment, please. Uh, could you come out? Thank you. Be right with you. I like your hat. How do you do? I'm Miss Loretta, public liaison for the congressman. Ellen Juba, my daughter Mickey. We'd like to see him. Y'all from the district? Up here seeing the sights? How'd you folks like some gallery passes? Go on over and listen to some of the great debates of our day. We don't want to go to the gallery. We want to see Congressman Johnson. Well, how about a house key ring for each of you? Here, see that? Isn't that something? Turns into a pen. I don't think you understand. We're not tourists. We're constituents. You're not with some organization, are you, honey? I'm a goddamn citizen. Isn't that enough? Do you have an appointment? No, I do not have an appointment, because y'all keep giving me the runaround. Well, you know, I'm sorry, but the congressman is a very busy man. Now, if you'd like to discuss it with me, I will personally go over the issue with him and get a letter out to you. We're not leaving here until we see him. Armando, would you come out front? We have a situation. You stop palming me off on your flunkies. Now, are you going to go in there and tell him we're out here, or am I going to go in there and tell him myself? 
Excuse me, can I help you, please? Yes, you can. I would like to see my congressman, please. Well, he's not here today. You know, I bet he is here. Excuse no, me. No, please, lady. No, no, you no, just no, let no. Okay, yeah, I yeah. Don't want to walk up with him. I am fed up with God. Hey! Hey! Right hey. Oh. Hey, I was lucky, but but there are others. What do you mean, what others? Other kids. They call it a cancer cluster. At first, none of us in the neighborhood wanted to believe it, but then we all saw it. For me, it was when the two-year-old across the street developed a brain tumor, same as Mickey's. We looked at everything. The water, the air, dump sites, insects, you name it. And we realized it was staring us right in the face. What? Power lines. High voltage power lines. The wires cause magnetic fields, and the magnetic fields cause cancer, especially in children. You know, I've never heard anything like that in my life. Why don't you just come see for yourself? Power lines. Land's cheap, so schools tend to buy it from the power companies. We're nobody, Congressman. You're somebody. We need your help. Can you excuse me for a second? Come here. Hmm. Is this real? Well, that depends on who you ask. Because some people say it's worse than asbestos or breast implants. And others say it's purely coincidental. Well, you, what do you say? I think it's very suspicious that the White House would kill an EPA report saying the power lines probably cause cancer. They did that? Yes. Well, I gotta do something to help these people. Don't tell me you're actually developing a conscience. Oh, God, I hope not to be a fucking nuisance in Congress. <laughs> but if I were, what could I do to help them? Now, this goes beyond personal tragedy. It goes to a public health hazard of unknown proportions. It goes to the right of the ordinary people to know all the facts. Yeah, people ought to know if the neighborhoods are killing them, you know? Amen, gentlemen. Amen. And what a fine effort it is. I'm totally sympathetic. Congressional hearings should be scheduled just as soon as possible. The American people deserve no less. Message, we care. Great. Turn this way, please. Right here, sir. Okay. Right over here. Great. Cheers. You know, son, you're a real comer. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you ended up in the leadership. I'll say this. If I were speaker, I'd sleep better with you as a lieutenant. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm surprised to hear you say that, because I really honestly didn't think you was going to go with me on this power lines thing. But I'm not. But you said you were sympathetic. Well, of course I did. We're all sympathetic to little girls with cancer. But I'm not sympathetic to holding a public inquiry. <laughs> I mean, you just said... I know what I said, but sound bites aren't sworn testimony. Now, look, son, it's great to get your name in the newspaper. Let them know you care. Very smart move, Thomas. But that's as far as I would go with this if I were you. Yeah. Oh, fine, fine. No, no, no. Send them in. We've got some unexpected visitors. Hope you don't mind. Oh, hell no. Sure, great. <laughs> yeah. oh, Mr. Chairman. Hold on. <laughs> Hello, Terry. <laughs> Even, Mr. Chairman, thanks for taking... Thomas! Uh, Zeke! 
They let you in here, you SOB. You folks wanting to get the press flesh. Olaf, come and meet Thomas Johnson. Thomas, Olaf Anderson, Chairman, Gulf Coast Power. Glad to meet you, son. They tell me you got a real taller for the game. <laughs> and this is Zeke Bridges, CEO, Superior Mutual Insurance. Some bitch. Oh, you two know each other? Uh, no, we haven't met, but I know a great deal about the man. We share a common interest in international affairs. Swedish in particular. <laughs> <coughs> oh, another Rolex. I collect these. Mine's a slightly older model. <coughs> Can I have a double bourbon, please? <coughs> it's very nice finally meeting you, Mr. Bridges. Yes, it's nice to meet you, Congressman. Thomas and I were just talking about uh, power lines. Oh, man. I think we ought to have those hearings. Well, now, look, Thomas, why don't we get uh, Olaf's take on this? Well, it's tragic. I mean, cancer's a terrible thing. <laughs> There's no way you can link it to power lines. Now, the truth is... Wait a minute. Now, there have been studies that show... Every study that says one thing, I'll show you a study saying another. We've studied this ourselves. Not that. What if all you guys are wrong? Well, Thomas, do you want us to move the power lines? I mean, you know how much it would cost to bury those things in Florida alone? I mean, we're talking five billion dollars. Not counting the liability claims. Now, how would you like the people in your district to think of you as the fellow who tripled their electric bill? I just thought that, it, you know, we, if we had the hearings... Think for a moment, chum. You hold your hearings overnight. Everyone who lives near a substation will find the value of his home in the toilet. You'll kill the real estate market. You'll kill the insurance companies. You'll kill the school district. You'll kill the local economy. Son, system ain't perfect. But the fleas come with the dog. Maybe I should think about it, huh? Atta boy. <clears throat> oh, Thomas, on a completely different subject here, uh, you haven't set up a state pack yet, have you? Because I'd be happy to start one off with a contribution of, say, oh, 200,000. No strings attached. Natch. You were beautiful, Olaf. Are you beautiful, Dick? No. You just missed a good one. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That reminds me. Same two old men on the park bench. It's a closed rule. I can't get my amendments on the floor. I can't get a recorded vote. I can't get squat. This is not the rules committee. This is the steam room. This is the U.S. Congress. The American people deserve better than this. You know what your problem is, Eli. You've got sermonitis. <laughs> now, why don't you just relax? Have a massage. I've got news for you, Dick. I'm gonna run against you for speaker. I'm gonna make this whole race boil down to whether we wanna sleaze like you in the speaker's chair. I bet you $100 you don't get 10 votes. I'm gonna be your shadow, Dick. Every member you strong arm, every reporter your background, every talk show you go on, I'll be there. Five votes. Nobody likes to hear a sermon. Now, I may not have a rat's ass of a chance to beat you, but I sure as hell can let the world know what you stand for.
I went too far with him. I know it. Now, you know him pretty well, don't you? Well, I wouldn't say I knew him well. Oh, come on, Thomas. You're seeing his niece. Hell, you've been out to his damn church. Now, how do you know that? Because I keep my ear to the ground. <laughs> now, Thomas, he'll listen to you. I want you to go make the peace between us. Tell him we'll work something out with his amendments. I, not a vote. I won't go that far. But at least he'll get to say his piece from the floor. Just get him off of my back. Another round? Yeah, why not? The Honorable Dick Dodge. Time. I'm finished with him. He won't be speaking. He'll be lucky if they don't indict him. Eli, people do things that they regret, man. People make mistakes. Your dick's been under a lot of pressure lately. Come on. Thomas, your dick dodges yes, man. I am not a yes, man. When Dick says no, I say no. I know what you're up to. He's scared, and this is damage control. Yeah, well, you know what? This town, it isn't about passing laws anymore. It isn't about doing good anymore. All it's about is being here. Well, as I live and breathe. Hey, cuz. Hey. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is Miss Loretta Hicks uh, from my staff. This is Congressman Hawkins. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, would you, would you like a drink? You know, you two look like you could use a designated driver. Oh, good Samaritan. Praise them. I went out with Hawkins. We got in an accident. He's out cold. I'm okay, though. Were you driving? No, it was Miss Loretta. The girl from your office? Yeah. Hey, look, man. I don't like the way this looks for anybody, okay? You said you wanted to get back in Hawkins' good graces. This is your opportunity. All right. Now, you listen to me very carefully. I want you to tell the ambulance to take you to Walter Reed Hospital. It's a privilege they extend to congressmen. They'll keep it quiet. I'll handle the police. And you go home, keep your mouth shut. What? 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 Hello? Hello? Mr. 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 Chairman? Um, 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 no, 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 sir. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm a night owl. Uh, uh-huh. Um, oh my god, oh my god, is, is, is he all right? Good, good, good. Um, and, and Eli and Loretta? Uh-huh. 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 That's brilliant, Mr. Chairman. No, I'll, I'll call the morning shows and leak the information. They'll eat it up. At the top of the news, Maryland Congressman Elijah Hawkins is in satisfactory condition at Walter Reed Hospital after an overnight accident in the district. That's right, Laura. Hawkins reportedly had alcohol in his blood. Also slightly injured was an unidentified woman whom police say is linked to a phone sex operation in Florida. Shit. Linda, Congressman Hawkins, that's Reverend Hawkins, isn't it? 
Right you are, Laura. And how this plays into his long-standing campaign to reform congressional ethics is now anyone's guess. Dr. Please I'm trying to find Reverend Eli Hawkins. Let me check for you. Stay away from him. And stay away from me, too. See, listen, we were set up. We were set up? You were in the car. I didn't hear your name mentioned on the news. Look, something stinks here. It sure does. And guess who it is, Thomas? You don't give a damn about anything, do you? And to think the other night I actually thought that you cared about somebody other than yourself. Oh, now you know how I feel about it. Not me, you jerk! I can't show up. You caved on the power lines, didn't you? Don't even answer because I know you did. What'd you get for it? Are you gonna let me talk? Get the hell out of here. Get out. Hattie. Hattie Rifkin? Oh, Rifkala. Don't Rifkala me, you mumza. What the hell do you want? Oh, Hattie, I want to talk to you. I've heard that before, Mr. Name You Know. Hattie, I know you got me elected, and I, I forgot your name in the morning. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I really, 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 I really need you. So talk. Why are we meeting here, Thomas? Trouble at the office? Well, Dodge says he keeps his ear to the ground, but I know that's bullshit. He has an inside man. Brian Hart? Yes. Let's whack him. Hey. This ain't Scarface, all right? You got a plan? Big Con. Dick Dodge is the mark. Dick Dodge? And we're getting out of our league here, man. This guy's been doing the Big Con for over 30 years. Mmm, cuz these politicians, these are some serious slick fish. Uh -huh. Wait a second, why is everybody going soft here all of a sudden? What are you, a bunch of fucking incumbents now? Listen. Thursday, Dick Dodges at the Arts Caucus, all right? I need to know just how long it takes to get from there to the EPA building. All right, Armando? Okay, now, Loretta, I want you to get some information on the EPA and give that to the Roper. And I got a list of equipment I want you to go get, all right? Crazy, baby. Hey, don't we need a new Roper? I mean, hey, look, everybody around here knows our faces. Speak of the devil. My man! Eli Hawkins got his tail caught in the crack, huh? He did. And you kept my name out. I did. So I owe you. You do? <laughs> this hearing of the Committee on Power and Industry will come to order. The health of America's insurance industry is hey. essential to the well-being of our economy. Something came up. I got a call from an EPA guy. He right, said so he heard how fast I bailed on power lines. And he's got something really hot for me. He wanted to meet me like out of the office, like after business hours, like tonight. Mr. Whitney? You said you'd be alone. What is he doing here? What is he, a cop? You wearing a wire? You wearing a goddamn wire? Relax, Mr. Whitney. I'm not wired. Yeah? Well, let's see. Got it. Just gotta find it. That's all. Get your hands off me! Hey, man, I told you he's okay. He's not wired. Look, he has no wire here. No wire. You can trust him. Look at this guy. He got fire engines on his drawers. This is a good man. Now cool it. Just relax. Is this gonna be something we can use? Your friends at the power company would be very interested. Talk to me. The White House is putting heat on the EPA. Now, we're going to announce a major investigation on the relation between power lines and cancer clusters. Mrs. Dodge, it's Arthur Reinhardt. Map in the Baptist and the brothel, you son bitch. Olaf, you hear about this EPA bullshit? 
Why, I could ruin Gulf Coast power. They're going ahead with this goddamn paralyzed investigation. I mean, I thought we had this settled. They don't have any proof. They ain't looking for proof. They're looking for dinner and we're it. I tell you, I'm about as crazy as a dog in a hubcap factory. <sighs> All right, Zeke. Zeke, I'm going up to D.C. for the clean air hearings anyway. I'll talk to Dodge. You got a second? Yeah. Okay, I heard something. I know there's some business in there. I'm listening. EPA launched a big investigation on power lines and getting a lot of pressure from the White House. That's very interesting, my friend. I heard the same thing. <laughs> Nothing gets by you, does it? Not much. But thank you, son. I appreciate you sharing that with me. OK, so there's probably some minute for us. Thomas, if we got the EPA off Olaf Anderson's back, he'd be extremely appreciative. So how do we go about doing that? Well, by committee, we audit their funding. Hell, I got him by the balls. Oh, so he's just going to rip the balls No, out. no, 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 Thomas. Persuasion. Strenuous persuasion. Oh, that's allowed. Persuasion, yes. Intimidation, no. But it's a gray area. Who's to say which is which? Oh, you persuade them. You can't rip them out. You have to persuade them. Hey, Dick, listen. Is there somebody you can call to make sure, you know, like the EPA is really doing an investigation? Of course. You ought to be in by now. Who? Skeeter Warburton, of course. Always go straight to the top side. Oh, that's a lot of my league, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman Dodge? Oh, uh, uh, Mrs. Rifkin from the, um, Silver uh, Boxes. Oh, you yeah. remember America's second largest seniors organization with members in every district in Florida, including yours. Oh, yeah. Of course, it's a marvelous organization, just marvelous. Well, it's always a pleasure Congressman, to see you. Congressman, I need to talk to you. Yes, I'd like that very much. Uh, but right now, I'm in a rush to get back to my office. You call for an appointment. We'll get together This won't and... take a second. Could I just walk you to your office? Oh, oh that'd be fine. just agreed to look at the new support hose, we feel like we made some progress. Indeed. You know, Mrs. Rifkin, I'm always so excited to hear your views, but really, dear, I've got to run. So run. Who's keeping you? So don't be a stranger. Keep in touch. Oh, no, uh, supervisor said, uh, supervisor said ain't supposed to be no paperwork on this because something about your kill, some radon study. Well, we did delete a few minor budget items. Hey, hey, how's it going to look to the other people if they find out I swept your office with radon and didn't do everybody else? How's that going to look, Mr. Wabaton? Point taken. Go right ahead. You better step outside. I got to spray some nasty shit. Look at that. Ah. Uh, um. Brenda, uh, I'm stepping out for a few minutes. Yeah, Brenda, don't come in here, because you, you might get some of this shit on you.
Uh, Brenda, I've changed my mind. Uh, I'm expecting a call from... Mr. Warburton, Chairman Dodge is on line two. Oh, speak of the devil. Put him through. Afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Skeeter here. I need a straight answer from you, Skeeter. Is the White House on your back about power lines? Are you off the record, Mr. Chairman? Of course. Well, I had hoped to go up to Hyannisport this weekend to spend some time with Tish and do some sailing, but I don't think I'm going to be able to because I'm spending a lot of time here in the office writing testimony to your committee on cancer clusters. Well, I uh, appreciate your candor, Skeeter. Anything to be of help, Mr. Chairman. Uh, take off the rest of the week, please, Brenda. I just don't see how I can help you on this one, Olaf. This is the EPA. This is the president. This is my lifeblood. Olaf, I see that. I see that. But in this town, you've got to pick your fights. This could mean six figures, Dick. Hi, six figures. Seven figures? I suppose a million dollars isn't too much to insure against losing five billion. Now you're talking. But how can I funnel this kind of money to you? If that's what you want, we can find a loophole. No one will see your fingerprints. No one will know? No one will know. Olaf's just making a contribution as a patriotic citizen. And in return for that, he's getting... Good government. Exactly. Little access, that's all. Yes, I'm calling from Chairman Dodge's office on the hill. Uh, we wanted to be sure that CNN was sending a crew to the clean air hearings today. No, not the new emission standards. We're breaking news. This is the biggest thing since the check bouncing scandal. This is Cynthia Leeson from the White House press office. My boss just wanted me to call you folks and let you know that we're going to be making a very important testing, announcement testing, today one, at the two, clean three, air four. hearings. No, I'm sorry, I can't tell you that, but it's hot. <laughs> Well, if the New York Times wants to be the only paper in town to miss out on the biggest story of the year, well, that's just up to y'all. Hurry up. Get into your seat. Come on, everybody. It's gonna be a great day. Molly, get your Harry. Well, that's a girl. From the back? Just sit down, will you? Sorry. How's everything? Great. You know what would be a wonderful way for us to start? With me congratulating you on what a wonderful job you've been doing on the committee, you know? And really show our appreciation, especially on behalf of the minority community. Well, I appreciate that, son. Thank you very much. I'm cutting out of here early. Don't want to run into him? This is a mistake. I never should have come. Well, I'm surprised. Well, I'm delighted by the media turnout today. I had no idea that clean air was such a good issue. Oh, yeah, isn't it something? <laughs> This meeting of the Power and Industry Committee to consider the reauthorization of the Clean Air Act is now in session. Today's first business is a panel of national leaders in the field of utilities. But before I welcome them, the chair would like to yield to the distinguished gentleman from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a very personal statement, Mr. Chairman. I would like to start off by saying thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you uh, for your leadership and for your vision. But most of all, I'd like to thank you for your courage, especially for your courage. My courage? Yes, sir, your courage in exposing the corruption that eats away at this institution. And your courage in taking on the special interest and your courage in taking a major new step. But uh, I, I, I've done nothing new, nothing at all. Uh, what are you talking about? This is true, because integrity is nothing new to you, Mr. Chairman. Integrity is second nature to this man. But still, it's a rare public servant who will take on the PACs and the lobbyists and the fat cats and side with the American family who just want to live in safe neighborhoods and send their kids off to safe schools. Well, I thank the gentleman, but we really must move along. If the gentleman would... Uh... Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday I had a meeting with the chairman in his office, with Mr. Olaf Anderson of Gulf Coast Power and his lobbyist, Mr. Terry Corrigan. I thank the gentleman, but we really must move along. The subject of this meeting was the possible EPA investigation on power lines and the connection between them and increased cancer risk. I... Gentleman's out of order. 
Now, what makes this meeting um, different from most of the other meetings that take place in Washington was that the American people were actually represented in the form of this. At Chairman Dodge's suggestion, I videotaped the entire meeting. Huh? Don't you love that? Isn't that something? Dick Dodge, isn't he something special? Don't you love this man? Gentlemen, it's out of order. Dodge double-crossed us. They're fired. Don't you love this chairman? Gentlemen, it's out of order! So he's brought dignity back to the name Dick. No longer is it tricky. Come on. Dick is good. Dick is good. Turn off his microphone. Chairman Dodge. This is neither the time nor the place for these matters. But you may rest assured that the committee will investigate them thoroughly. Now, <laughs> we're going to take a 15-minute recess. Dick, you crazy son of a bitch. You know we planned this. our conversation? Yeah, well, they are making them kind of small nowadays. <laughs> you bastards! You two bastards! You think you're gonna hang me out to dry? Bullshit! If I go down, you go down, Dick Dodge. Say, do you remember that little $300,000 you squeezed out of me for your voter registration scam, huh? What the hell was that? <laughs> Just water under the bridge. Now, hold on. What about the $200,000 for your phony foundation, huh? Oh, those bundle checks my executive put in your pocket? Well, huh? Hold on. No, no, I trusted you, Dick. I gave you my condo in Vail. I gave you my carpet jet to fly all over right, the goddamn... No, no, no. I, I, I bought 10,000 copies of your boring, dull-ass autobiography. Mr. I put up scholarships to send your kids through college. I even hired your goddamn colorblind wife to redecorate my office. Hold off, hold off. Jesus, what? Sam! What are you doing? I'm trying to tell you. I didn't have a goddamn thing to do with you. You shitting me? No, 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 no. Think. Think. I know you got me by the short and curlies. What the hell would I have to gain by selling you out? I had no idea that slime bag was taping us. Excuse me, Dick. Lighten up on the slime bag, eh? What's your game, Thomas? Shakedown? Yeah, it's a shakedown. All right? And unless you want to see this all over CNN, you're going to pay my price. First, I want you to call Skeeter Warbutton. I want you to tell him to launch an investigation on power lines. Ah, there's more. I want you to resign. You can tell people it's for health reasons. Most of us believe that because we've seen you in the steam room. Why the hell are you doing this? I am doing this for Mickey Juba, and I'm doing this for Celia Kirby, and I'm doing this for my grandmother, and about a million other people that you wouldn't give a shit about. Who? Look, do we have a deal on that? Well, I guess that depends entirely on... Uh... What's on that tape, doesn't it? Oh, you know what's on this tape. This is America's sleaziest home video. That's what's on this tape. Fuck that. Let's see what you really got on hey, that man, tape. Hey, man, this Pick is just a copy, all right? Oh, I did. Just a copy. Yo, man, it's just a copy. Maria, my hot-blooded Spanish friend. Babette, the Parisian pussycat, and many yeah. others. So called the it's girls of many nations. At one nine hundred. stinking, cheap-ass blood. NATO. Well, the question is, can we get the shit back into the horse? Why not? He never made any specific charges. So what do we do when we go back in the hearing? Leave that to me. You just walk back in there looking dignified. Dignified? And you. You better be very, very quiet in there, my friend. I got the goods on you. And it would be my pleasure to leave tire marks all over you. Oh, like you did Hawkins. Oh, not even close. So unless you want to spend the next 20 years in prison, you'll keep your mouth shut. Now, do we understand each other here? Yeah, we understand each other. Huh? All right. Let's do it. All right, folks.
folks. Step back, please. Come on. We're in the hallway now. Give me some room. Step back, please. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
terrible. Everybody knows my face now, and I'm finished in the line of business I was in. Can't exactly go into 7-Eleven and pass bad checks anymore. <laughs> you know what so what are you gonna do? Well, I got a full head of hair, uh -huh. famous face.